so we've been working on this uh, related problems to grasping uh, for a while now. And by the way, uh, Jim Leifer, who I understand is the CEO at, uh, at Ambia, was, uh, worked for me at, at Kindred before. Mm -hmm. um, we worked together for a while. Um, so we've been working on grasping for a while. And I, I, I want to just echo this for everybody and, and maybe make a point of it that it's been understood for a long time now for people who work on robotics type issues that the things that we intuit are complex are actually not. And the things that we take for granted that are kind of quote unquote easy are actually amazingly complex things. And partly it's because we evolved to be very good at certain things. And uh, grasping is um, one of those things. So grasping and manipulation of the world engages a whole bunch of different systems that need to be built in order to do it. So one of them is you need a sophisticated machine. You need a hand or something like a hand. The hand needs to move and it also needs to sense. And the, the mind, the, so the control system that's moving the hand needs to be able to both perceive the world and understand it. So they're a common sense reasoning. And it needs to be able to do this under wildly different conditions. So uh, if you think about mm -hmm. what you need to be able to do in order to pick a thing up, it, you have to build uh, uh, an architecture for your control system that mimics virtually every single system that we know about in the human brain. So our, uh, our view of grasping is that grasping is, is almost what you can consider uh, AI complete hmm. in the sense that if you could build a machine that could manipulate the world in the same way that a human could, you're nearly there to being able to build human-like intelligence because the kind of problems you need to solve in order to build a human-like intelligence in a machine are almost a one-to-one -one match to the kinds of problems you need to solve in order to build uh, an arbitrary grasper or manipulator of the world. Mm. Um, so I just wanted to reinforce the, the, what Ken is saying, and he's actually underselling the difficulty of this problem, uh, but it's, it's a very, very complex problem. And by the way, it's fairly simple to build a machine that will pick up a thing in a static environment and it, you know, like a manufacturing robot or something like that. But that's not the problem we're talking about. We're talking about you. So you sat in front of the table can pick up anything on the table, but there's no robot that's ever been built that can do that yet. Uh, so we've been working on it. In terms of the timing, it's it's a very hard problem. I think that it, it will be not too long be, between solving that problem and having machines with human-like cognition. I think they're actually pretty similar in how long it will take. Uh, that is a, that is a great point. And actually, I really love that your your, your point about AI complete. Um, I never put it. I never thought of it that way, but it's a really good one because you're right. It it incorporates all these these nuanced aspects. And it, it, and I think, you know, when we pick up an object, right, which we can effortlessly, effortlessly do, and we can even do that, you know, th there is so much going on there. It's just, uh, it's staggering. So, and I would also point out that I, I was extremely clumsy as a kid. I still am clumsy. And when anybody would throw me a ball of any size, I would immediately drop it. So I think that's why I've been fascinated by this problem uh, all these years.